And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter. Uterine fibroids are bundles of smooth muscle and connective tissue, and although they're sometimes called tumors, fibroids are actually not cancerous. However, because they disrupt the blood vessels and glands in the uterus, they can cause bleeding and loss of other fluids. Around 30% of women over age 30 have at least one fibroid. Hysterectomies due to fibroids are the most common major surgery for women, and uterine fibroids are classified according to their location, and that would be submucosal fibroids, which are just under the lining of the uterus, intramural fibroids, which are within the uterine muscle wall, and subserosal, which is just inside the outer wall of the uterus. There's also interligamentous, which is in the cervix between the two layers of the broad ligament, and also pedunculated fibroids, which are on a stalk, which can either be submucosal or subserosis. So what causes uterine fibroids? Increases in local estrogen, specifically estradiol concentration within the fibroid itself, are thought to play a major role in the development and growth of fibroids. Concentrations of estrogen receptors are higher in fibroid tissue than in surrounding tissue, and in addition to an excess of estrogen production within the body, the presence of xenoestrogens are also significant. Xenoestrogens are also known as endocrine disruptors or even hormone disruptors and also known as environmental estrogens. And they can be hormonally active agents, estrogenic substances, estrogenic xenobiotics, and bioactive chemicals. Examples of xenoestrogens include phthalates, which are used in all plastics, pesticides, tobacco smoke byproducts, and various solvents. Xenoestrogens enhance or block the effects of estrogen in the body by binding to estrogen receptors. They also promote a shift from healthy estrogen breakdown products to cancer-causing estrogen metabolites. The easy answer to uterine fibroids that's typically tossed around is if uterine fibroids are caused by an excess of estrogen produced in the body, in addition to the effect of xenoestrogens, then it follows that reducing estrogenic influences should shrink the uterine fibroids. However, as women pass through menopause, there is of course less estrogen, so there will be also a tendency for the fibroid to shrink naturally. So as far as your diet, the most important dietary recommendations for women are to eat a high fiber diet rich in phytoestrogens, which are plant-based estrogens, and of course to avoid processed food, sugar, and also caffeine. Phytoestrogens are able to bind to the same cell receptors as the estrogen your body produces, and that's a good thing because when phytoestrogens occupy the receptors, estrogen can't affect the cells. By competing with estrogen, phytoestrogens cause a drop in estrogen effects and are thus sometimes called anti-estrogens. And so great sources of phytoestrogens include flaxseed and soy, although you do want to be careful with soy. It can be very allergenic for some people. Just adjusting your diet this way can have a profound effect not just in treating uterine fibroids, but also in reducing the risk of endometrial cancer, as women with uterine fibroids often are exponentially more likely to later develop endometrial cancer. One common argument against the use of soy in the diet is that while soy is high in phytoestrogens, specifically isoflavones, which have a weak estrogenic effect, women with uterine fibroids or endometrial cancer should actually avoid phytoestrogens. But soy phytoestrogens don't appear to have an estrogenic effect on the uterus and may actually help to shrink uterine fibroids due to their naturally anti-estrogenic effect. But again, many people can be sensitive to soy or outright allergic to it, so you do want to be careful with utilizing soy. You can also find soy isoflavins as a supplement, and a common everyday dose for women with soy isoflavins is around 45 milligrams to 90 milligrams per day. The B vitamins in inositol and choline have been used historically to support the body's detoxification of estrogen. These are what we call lipotropic factors, and lipotropic factors promote the removal of fat from the liver. Lipotropic supplements usually are a combination of vitamins and herbs designed to support the liver's function in removing fat, detoxifying the body's wastes, and detoxifying external harmful substances, which would be things like pesticides, flame retardants, and plastics. And also they're helpful at metabolizing and excreting estrogens. And so along with this, two other anti-cancer phytonutrients you'll often find 
are vegetable derivatives from the brassica family, and these would include indole-3-carbonyl and dindelyl-methane, which is also known as DIM, and also the broccoli extract, sulforaphane. All three of these compounds can break down cancer-causing forms of estrogen into non-toxic forms, making them especially important for women with uterine fibroids. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy. Thank <laughs> you.